Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, I rise uh, today to speak in support of the Police Powers and Responsibilities and Other Legislation Amendment Bill 2013. This bill further delivers on our commitment to strengthen frontline policing and implements an out-of-control event scheme in order for police to respond effectively to increasingly common Facebook parties or open house parties. And, uh, like the member for Nango, I've been enjoying a little bit of dialogue on Facebook with some constituents. And uh, today one constituent particularly said, well, why do we need to introduce these laws? Uh, isn't the existing criminal code sufficient to deal with this? And my response was, I said, well, there's certainly provisions within the current criminal codes, but some laws were written before social media existed, and so amendments are required to keep pace with them and make sure that, that we have uh, the powers that the police need to take effective action uh, in these changing times. And the Newman government is committed to making Queensland the safest place in Australia to live and raise a family. Our tough stance on law and order has been unwavering, and we make no apologies for introducing some of the toughest laws in Australia in respect of serious crime, sexual offenders and criminal motorcycle gangs. And it's interesting, this morning on the Today Show, um, Peter Gleeson, the editor of the Sunday Mail and uh, former editor of the Gold Coast Bulletin and the Townsville Bulletin and a former chief of staff of, of many years' experience on the Gold Coast, um, he had a little bit to say. And uh, I, was, I have to say I was really surprised and encouraged by his support because he's one of those uh, battle-hardened uh, journalists who can tend to be a bit cynical and uh, I, I wouldn't say that uh, he's ever done our side of politics any great favours. Um, but this was the response to the question that Lisa Wilkinson raised with him. Uh, Lisa Wilkinson suggested that uh, she said Qu Queensland's Premier Campbell Newman's uh, bikey crackdown may have backfired just a little. Uh, well, here's what Peter Gleeson, the editor of the Sunday Mail, had to say. No, I don't think so at all, Lisa. I think the Premier has shown a lot of courage in relation to cracking down on bikies. I think in 20 to 30 years' time, Queenslanders will thank the Premier for the way he's taken the lead on this. The bottom line is that the bikies themselves, their lawyers and the judiciary, have sold Queensland as a pup on this issue. These guys are sophisticated criminal enterprises, the bikies. They peddle in drugs, they peddle in aggression, and they affect people's lives the wrong way. Newman and Blay have shown courage. They should be applauded for what they've done. The reality is that Campbell Newman will win the next election. He might cop a little bark off along the way, but he's making some tough calls at the moment, and I think Queensland will be a better place as a result and I think this is a legacy issue for Campbell Newman. I do think that he will want to be known as the Premier who disassembled the bikies. And Lisa Wilkins' response to that was, well, I think you're right there. Um, yeah, I'm happy to take that interjection from the uh, Attorney General. Um, and, and Mr Deputy Speaker, can I just say last Saturday, um, in one of my regular listening posts where I, I, I I uh, always set up on a, uh, I sat up, set up on Saturday mornings. Um, I had so many people from Kibra Park, one of the, 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 the toughest suburbs in my electorate, coming down on the Saturday morning just to say how pleased they were with how well the Gold Coast is tracking at the moment, with the great uh, summer season that we've had, and uh, the fact that many of them who came to me prior to the election to say they were worried about uh, drugs being dealt at, at the shops up the road. Uh, uh, they were particularly, it was one lady who came uh, who prior to the election had been and seen me and was really concerned about a few households up the street from where she lived where, where there was regular uh, um, illegal activity that, that she was concerned about. Uh, she came down again on Saturday just to say, please pass on my thanks to the Premier for the reforms. Uh, it's great to see the police back out on the streets and it's great to see the Gold Coast uh, back in control. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, in order to keep Queensland as safe, though, it's imperative that our police officers are equipped with the best resources and powers to deal with crime and antisocial behaviour. Increasing the capacity of the Queensland Police Force will mean increased safety for our kids, those in our community who are most at risk. The rise of the Facebook party has presented significant problems for our frontline police officers. Hundreds of intoxicated, often underage teenagers descend on a property for an advertised party, whether the host has intentionally or unintentionally invited them. And uh, like the member for Nanango, for Nanango uh, as a father of four boys, not three girls, uh, we've had a few 18ths and 21sts at our home uh, down the Gold Coast. And I can tell you as a parent, it's a bit of a challenge. 
Um, but uh, you know, we, we, we undertook all the sorts of measures you would expect. We contacted the parents. We letterboxed the neighbourhood. Um, we, uh, we had a door list. We, I invited about ten of my biggest mates over to provide a bit of security. Uh, we had other parents arranged at the end of the evening to ferry kids home that perhaps uh, shouldn't be making their own way home. And even with all those measures in place, uh, it was a challenge to keep other kids out that had heard about the party third hand or second hand through Facebook and other social media and text messages. So these reforms are important. Um, additional powers available to police responding to these out of control events uh, that will, will, will be required to satisf satisfy three set criteria, including power to enter any place without warrant, power to direct any person to stop any conduct, and power to direct any person to immediately leave a place and power to take any steps a police officer considers reasonably necessary. Unfortunately, these additional powers are now required by police officers confronted by scenes of chaos at out of control parties. The bill also provides for increased penalties for those found responsible for organising the events, including parents of children. And I love the, the, the fact that this is a part of this legislation because there are far too many parents who are not taking responsibility for their children and somehow expect that it's the teachers and it's the schools and it's the police and it's the community organisers and, and, uh, and community leaders in various um, uh, organisations and, and uh, charitable organisations and sporting clubs that should somehow be taking responsibility. But it is completely reasonable that parents should be liable if they allow a child to organise an out-of-control event. We need to take personal responsibility for antisocial behaviour and parents have a huge part to play in taking that responsibility and working with their children. Offenders and their parents may face hefty fines or even jail time if they're found guilty under the out of control events scheme. The maximum penalty will be 110 penalty units, uh, up to $12,100 or a year's imprisonment, and the sentence increases to 165 penalty units uh, or three years in prison imprisonment if the organiser has no lawful authority to use the place for an event. Organisers of Facebook parties and out-of-control events aren't just wasting police resources and encouraging senseless violence and property damage. Many of these, these events are undertaken for profit. The community has had enough of alcohol and drug fuelled violence stemming from these suburban parties and the people responsible need to be held accountable. Mr Deputy Speaker, we've seen some great outcomes for Queenslanders as a result of the Newman government's law and order reforms. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, just before Christmas, um, uh, sorry, over the Christmas summer period, we've seen a significant lift in tourist visitors and confidence has returned, uh, which of course is one of our, our four pillars. Uh, and uh, the Minister for Tourism uh, needs to be congratulated on her work uh, and the special uh, theme park campaign that, that's been run. And I know that that's been a contributor, but also a major contributor has been the fact that families feel safe uh, to return to the Gold Coast. And just before Christmas, the Gold Coast Bulletin reported that crime statistics on the Gold Coast in some areas had fallen as much as 60 per cent across the city as a direct consequence of the government's crackdown on criminal motor ga motorcycle gangs. As I talk to people around my electorate, it's easy to see the difference this has made. The perception of crime is drastically reduced and it's having a huge impact on the Gold Coast. This government makes no apologies for our tough stance on law and order. In fact, I'd like to, thank, like to think this government will be remembered for our tough stance on law and order. I'm proud to stand in this chamber as a member of the government that won't stand by while crime and antisocial behaviour infiltrates our communities and affects our livelihood and, more importantly, impacts significantly on the, 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 the health and wellbeing of our kids. I support the Minister for Police and Community Safety and his excellent initiatives in this bill.